For Sylph the Grim, we have him. You want to see him in action. Let's go. What's up, guys? MTG Jedi here, and we are on my dude Felt Firefox's account, frequent on my stream. And he messaged me and said, guess what? We now own for Self the Grim before the fusion is over. And I was like, so are you going to max him out? And so he has him maxed out here. We're going to go over his kit in case you're hesitant about fusing him. We're going to see him in action. Talk about some possible builds for you. And he's good, guys. He's actually good, okay? So, number one, I love his aura. HP in all battles by 33%. So, if you're using him in Doom Tower, if you're using him in, um, you know, dungeons or wherever, and you don't have an aura, he is a great aura to have. Now, this angry dude, he's got his chest ripped open, and he's housing a key in there, you know, it's where I like to keep my keys too. But he has a passive that when hit, he has a 20% chance of placing a provoke on the attacker occurs once per hit. So pretty low chance there. Pretty low in all honesty. His A3, I don't know how to feel about it because I just don't feel like it really fits him. Um, I, you know, I released a video saying how disgruntled I was about this fusion uh, because he doesn't have AoE provoke. And I think his A3 here would have been much more suited to be AoE Provoke. I mean, even it, like increased defense allergy protection and AoE Provoke. So, um, or increased defense uh, um, Provoke and just forget about the ally protection. Like the whole point is he's supposed to be protecting the team. I get that, but this faction needs an AoE Provoke or some kind of crowd control champion. And he's not going to do the job. Let me just tell you right away. He's not going to do the job. Okay, so here's the ability that I'm going to focus on today. Attacks all enemies, places an extra hit on enemies under stun, fear, freeze, true fear, and provoke. Um, and then there's you can place leech. Okay, sure, whatever. His A1 ha has a chance to place provoke but also places a shield on himself for two turns equal to 10% of his max HP. And this is an HP-based champion, so he has almost 23,000 HP. His base defense is solid. His base speed is eh. His crit rate, and cr his crit rate is normal. His crit damage is lower than normal, which is unfortunate because that's going to be a focus of our build today. Base resistance of 50. Base accuracy of 10 is nice if you're going to actually use the accuracy build so let's get into it and i'm going to show you what i came up with for this champion okay so we have him here and um this is okay just just let me catch you up real quick so uh firefox here he's only level 63 guys okay um he is on day 97 okay so this is a mid game account right like um if we come and we look at his faction wars like he's still progressing in the factions you know so this is not a late game account this is not a stacked op end game account or anything this is not like that so keep that in mind when we're going over the build um now in the knight's revenant crypt right here we only have 20 stars so even with the build that i have proposed today he's going to slot in there and i think that's going to be true for a lot of you guys all right now one of the issues on this account is damage dealers okay so he recently did the herndig fusion he also has skull crown and that's about it okay that's about it um he's been uh, relying a lot on Nethril for some damage. He's been relying on HP Burn, which I did steal those boots today. 
Um, and so in today's build, I've built Versolf for damage. Okay, he's the hardest hitting HP champion in the entire game as long as he has one of those debuffs to trigger. As long as he has stun, freeze, fear, true fear, or provoke. Okay, so with that being said. Um, we ended up with here, uh, only a 209 crit damage, okay? So this is not an insane build. He's not in savage gear. He has a bunch of mismatched sets. Well, actually, we did end up with a resilience and a speed set. Um, and the speed set actually just came about because of these boots. I really wanted to take advantage of the speed boots with this pile of crit damage and also i rolled this shield up and it hit really well with the crit rate crit damage and both hp okay so i kind of used the gear to show me how to build this champion with my goals in mind that i wanted him to be a damage dealer okay the gloves are not ideal number one they're five star number two the only hp is here and it is, you know, reasonably low crit rate roll. We have our double roll in defense, which is nice, you know. That's going to be very helpful. It basically gets us up to doubling our defense. But it's not necessary. We'd really like a six-star pair of gauntlets that, that just have this 10% crit rate. This is literally the only pair of gauntlets on his account that are crit damage with crit rate. So this is the ones that we needed to use for the build. Um, I don't know if this is obvious, but obviously we have um, an HP percentage chest here. Definitely want that in the build. You need to get his HP up as high as possible. I rolled this one up. We got a nice hit with the um, crit rate. Okay. On the jewelry, this ring is okay. It's not the best, so I didn't want to take it to 16. Um... The crit damage amulet, as soon as we get um, any, okay, let me just double check, okay. As soon as we get any six star crit damage amulet, that's an auto upgrade slot on him. Um, this is an okay banner, but if we were to get a six star one, you know, we could definitely get some better rolls here. So, um, you know, the weapon is not great either. We basically just have it for the crit rate and the speed. And that's all we could do with the gear. Um, the helmet ended up doing pretty well here. And I think that that's all of the other, uh, that's all the gear. So the goal was 100% crit rate, as much crit, crit damage as we can manage, and then as high HP as we can get it. Okay. Now, you will notice in this build, there is not accuracy. I did not build this guy with accuracy because... We couldn't do that on this account right now. I had to decide between damage or accuracy. We can do one or the other. And that's very common on mid-game accounts. You have to make a decision. What are you using this champion for? On this account, we're using him for damage. So I didn't build accuracy into his kit. So you have to take that into consideration when you're doing your gearing. Right On his skills, he is not booked. But he would get a significant damage boost if we could hit two books here on this ability. It would be nice to put some books into his A1 as well, um, just for faction wars. And then I suppose if you're going to use him in other areas, having the cooldowns here would be nice. But I'm going to tell you right now, I shut off this ability for the team we're going to use him in. Here are the masteries that I went with. I would say this is a typical nuker build. I don't think that this is very good on him, and I kind of regret putting it on him, the sniper debuff, because it doesn't increase the chance of placing provoke. Not that any of these masteries would really help. I mean, I guess spirit haste, I don't know. There, it, there, there wasn't a good decision here. But this is a typical build for nuker masteries coming down to Helm Smasher. If we were building him with accuracy in his kit, we should definitely have started here and here. This would give us accuracy. This would give us accuracy. And then we could have just skipped those. Um, so later on, when you get more gear, then we can end up doing it. Okay, let me close my door real quick.
Okay. So, that is the build we've ended up with. Now, also, we were able to gear up his Arbiter. He just pulled her. She's not even fully leveled up yet. She doesn't even have all her Masteries or her books or anything. But we were able to gear her. We got her up to 303 speed. One of the things that I am um, disappointed about with this build is I couldn't find a better chest piece than this. This was only a single roll speed, so this is an easy speed boost as soon as we get any better chest. Any chest piece with a double speed roll here is going to be much better, and then we're looking for some six star boots. Could have taken the boots from him, but it really made the build come together, so I didn't take those. Okay. Uh, the other piece is actually pretty nice here. Double speed roll here, HP percent. Ripple speed roll weapon, double speed roll helmet, double speed roll shield, all glyphed up, triple speed roll banner. Very nice. So we ended up with 51k HP, 52 basically. Very nice. 303 speed, and the rest of it is pretty unimportant. Um, also, we are going to be using Umbral as our enabler here. So I rebuilt Umbral to be speed tuned with his new Arbiter, and she needed to be around 236, 237 speed, so we got 240. And the biggest thing that we were concerned with here was the accuracy and the speed. Can build Umbral for, for damage, so do keep that in mind. That was not the focus of this build. Um... Maybe we should have leveled these gauntlets up. So, Firefox, when you watch this, I would probably level those up. Because that, that will help her survivability quite a bit. The other champion that we're using in this build is... Oh, yeah, Tyrell for decreased defense. And I didn't change this build one bit. He had him at 223. A really solid 3,500 defense, 325 accuracy in lifesteal gear with a perception set. I was very pleased with this build. Nicely done, my friend. Nicely done. Um, he is booked. Umbral is booked. He has his full masteries, presumably for his clan boss team. Very nice there. And um, I think we just need to talk about where we're going to use our dude versus self. So... Versolf. I think that he could be a wonderful champion in Dungeons, Faction Wars, maybe even Clan Boss, Doom Tower. You can use him everywhere. The build that I have made today has been a focus for Arena. So let's come in here and uh, I did um, on the AI. Let's go go over what I did with the AI. You um, Arbiter's going to prioritize this Mentor of Heroes ability. I like to put it in there just because we're on this screen. Umbral's going to prioritize this ability, the AoE Provoke. Again, I like to put it in there. Tyrell, same thing, decrease defense. But Versolf, he's going to come in here and do this first. We don't want that. We don't, in fact, ever want him to use that. So I have disabled that. We've set the Reign of Sorrow as his uh, primary. Um, and then he'll switch between his A2 and his A1. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so let's come in here and show you exactly what's going to happen. Arbiter is going to speed boost. Umbral is going to AoE provoke. He's going to decrease defense. And then Versolve is going to double hit and kill everyone. Okay, the very tanky defense-based champion did not die. That's okay. We'll finish him up with our Tyrell. And that's how this team works. This uh, follows the same sort of structure that I love building my arena teams with, and that's a speed booster, an AoE provoke, decreased defense, and then your damage deal. Now, the, uh, I don't know whether we got a random resist on the sill or what happened there, but we did not um, get the, or the, the uh, provoke on the sill. Um, and I'm not sure we must have had a weak hit here, being that he's Force and she is Spirit. But we still got the win, okay? 
Now, this team is capable of some very quick wins. Um, this should be fine unless the um unless the tower is super quick. He's not. Okay. So once we provoke and then hit the decrease defense, we should be killing them in five seconds, right? And that's gonna be a pretty big improvement from his previous arena team. Now, actually, his previous arena team was pretty nice. That was this team here. He had the Jingle Hunter as his speed lead. He had Jorg as his speed booster, decreased defense, and then Kale as a damage dealer. So it's really the same kind of setup. Um, this is just an upgraded version. Now, I will say on this account, um, I think that Herndig might do more damage than Versolf, just based on the gear on your account. So I would think about leveling him up as your next champion, Firefox. Um, it's not a need, but it does seem like he is the best option that you have. So I would probably just do that. Um, and then I would focus on, you know, leveling up all of these champions to 60 who are six star. It does make a big difference for sure. Um, now that you have Arbiter, she's going to probably go in all of your teams and uh, she's going to be such a huge improvement on your account. And that's true for everyone. So um, let me know what you think of Versolf in the comments below. I've been pretty impressed with him. Um, I've been a little hesitant to fight this team because it's a much higher team power. But we will end the video here with this and see if we can lock down an impressive victory against a much higher team power. We have to increase defense. And all close, close. Now, um, is she going to kill us? No. So I think that that means that we're good and we got this. Yes. All right. Nice. Lock down the win. 22 seconds against a much higher team power. Wonderful. So that'll do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for Firefox. Um, I, uh, I did, uh, I did an account takeover for him today for this arena team. I hope that you like it and, uh, we probably maxed out your, uh, artifact enhancement event for you as well. So thank you guys for watching. If you have questions, uh, leave them in the comments below and otherwise I will see you guys in the next one.